Okay, hello and welcome to Friends of Forest Fisk. And um, uh, I have a friend that was or is a professional a female bodybuilder. Amateur, uh, amateur. <laughs> amateur, okay. But still, uh, it's so cool to see some of her pictures. And also, she wanted to talk a little bit about how she is a uh, train conductor, I believe. So she has at least two aspects of her life that are just completely different than the typical, the typical way people sometimes live their lives. And so that's kind of what I like to do, explore my various friends that I have that has just a little few things different about them that make them unique. And I uh, want to share that with my other friends. So before we go into that, I wanted to talk about how I know my friend Virginia. In uh, 2004, uh, uh, two, I don't, uh, three, three, four, three, three. I, uh, we were going to Northwest Nazarene University, my alma mater, and um, it was like my sophomore year or something. And uh, she, she was around, she was a student. I think we were in choir together or something. And it was toward the end of the year and the senior mass media um, uh, school, the uh, classmates uh, were doing a senior year project. And that is a full video production uh, education. So they were learning how to write a script, uh, edit the script, uh, find uh, locations, get actors and actresses, uh, do the fam the camera lighting and the focus and the grips and the and the microphones and the audio and edit that all with music and sound and, and put it on to DVD. And so they were getting their education on how to do that. And so in the process, they needed to find some male lead actors and a female lead actor uh, for a pretty small cast and to, and to do that. So I fulfilled the uh, requirements and I guess I acted well enough to, to get in. And so I was, I was picked to be the male lead and she was the female lead. And I have the link here in the description. Uh, I put it on YouTube, probably broke some uh, some rules on that, but it was a cute little um, script written by the professor there. Anyway, um, we did that. And the funny thing was I wasn't available because I had a final exam for the last day of shooting. So the most important part of this video that we're part of where I'm supposed to be like the lead man, they had to blur it out and get some other guy to dress in my tuxedo that we had for choir and shoot the film out of focus because I couldn't make the shoot. So uh, long story short, uh, just make sure that you're, uh, the, 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 pro the people you hire for your projects are available for all the times that you need <laughs> or, or something. So anyway, so we did that and that's how we know each other a little bit better. We recently reconnected over barbecue here in uh, Kansas city uh, for, uh, she was on vacation. And uh, I just wanted to know how her life was. I just remember you, Virginia, as someone who was a bit more of a free spirit than, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, I freely admit our college, we're a little bit on the conservative side. It's a, a conservative Christian college and, and you were a bit more of a free spirit. And I remember nobody said anything, at least while I was there, but some people gave you the side eye, like, what is going on? What is she doing? Why is she doing no, this? It's funny you say that because yeah. I remember um, getting into the elevator in the dorm and there were like posters in the elevators saying, just a reminder to practice modesty when sunbathing on the soccer field. And that was me and my friends. <laughs> so oh. that's kind of funny. And wow. we weren't being immodest, but I guess by NNU standards it was, but. Yeah, yeah. I think every culture <laughs> has their own standards. Cause like, you know, you walk around certain parts of Africa completely naked, nobody would care, but you know, or France <laughs> for that matter. Um, yeah, and then you, it's not Africa. <laughs> no, no. There is an African Nazarene University, but I, I think they probably have the same conservative ideas. Probably. Anyway, so how was that for you? How was school for you? What is the whole bodybuilder thing? Like, why, why did you get into that? How did you get into that? And about that same time, I remember seeing all these pictures. Then you had a baby. So how was that all about? And, and then train stuff. You wanted to talk about that. So please share your story. What's going on with you? Well, it's funny because I only went to NNU for one semester. Oh, so really? it was spring, spring semester 2003. 
Um, I had intended to go my whole freshman year and then um, my parents wanted me to stay home for a semester. So um, I went spring semester. I ended up getting engaged over spring break and then I moved back home to get married and all of that. So um, my time at NNU was really, really short, but I had a really good time. I enjoyed the college experience and I met a lot of really great people. So it was it was a positive experience for me. Um, I guess, other than sunbathing on the soccer field. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, so that was good. And then um, what got me into the whole um, bodybuilding thing, mm-hmm. I had never stepped foot in a gym. Like in high school, I did cheerleading and that was my sport. And I didn't really do um, anything else. I wasn't into working out. I ate like crap, like it was ramen noodles and V8 splash. And that was like my diet. It was terrible. So, um, so I went from that and people don't believe me when I tell them that because they see me today after a lot of years of learning how to eat right and exercise and make those healthy lifestyle choices. So, um, it was gosh, probably 2000, Five, I think it was. I was going to Abilene Christian University in Abilene, Texas, and I was required to take, um, it was basically like a combination of health and PE class. It was just a requirement for all majors. So it was just getting my generals out of the way. And uh, one of the assignments in the class was to make our own exercise prescription. So I had never been to the gym. Um, My ex uh, was in the military, so they had a pretty nice fitness facility on base. So I just went there and I didn't know what I was doing. I just kind of went around and I did like the circuit machines and like 10 minutes on the elliptical. And I'm like, okay, I I think I'm fit, you know, but I I started to really enjoy it. And then um, I went back home for a summer to work. as an onboard supervisor on the passenger trains. And um, while I was there, um, I met uh, my son's dad and he showed me a few things about uh, working out and stuff because he he was a bit of a meathead. (laughs) And uh, so he showed me a little bit about free weights and introduced me to that. And then I just continued um, with those types of workouts. And the more I lifted the more I loved it and wow. realized that I hated running, but I love lifting. So um, that got me into it. And then I had people tell me, oh, you should compete. You should compete. And then I had the stereotype that pretty much everyone has. I'm like, oh, I don't want to be one of those burly man looking women. I'm like, no, I, I don't want to do bodybuilding. Okay. So, I mean, it's a stereotype. I had it too, but um, I don't think I'm a manly looking woman. <laughs> and so it's, um, it's a specific look and it is possible for women to get that size and that shape and that look, but it takes very specific training and nutrition to get there. And it's very, very hard and it takes years to do. So, uh, the average woman, participating in strength training is not going to have that kind of appearance. It'll just, um, just help you to maintain a, a healthy body weight and give you more energy, things like that. So, um, just a little, um, myth buster moment here. Uh, so I, I had those perceptions and then I had, um, someone, um, ended up sending me an application, um, for, or, or that the entrance, um, form for a, um, fitness competition that was going on. And it was like two weeks away. (laughs) And so I had been working out periodically with a trainer. And so I, I called her up. I'm like, Hey, so someone gave me this thinks I should do it. What do you think? She's like, well, let's take a look at you and make sure, but I'd say, yeah, let's, let's give it a try. And so this competition was a week after my wedding. (laughs) So I I had been, you know, working out and dieting and stuff to fit into my wedding dress, but I, I had two weeks (laughs) to to do about two months of 
it usually takes about two months to yeah. prepare for a contest and I did it in two weeks and I was so miserable but wow. I ended up it was a really small competition and I ended up getting first overall so once oh, wow. I had turned cool. back in my system and the fancy shiny little trophy I'm like oh that wasn't so bad that was that was kind of cool and so um I decided to do another one the following year yeah. but with more than two weeks to prepare for it right. and so I um I just kept competing sometimes I do a couple shows back to back you know two to three weeks apart um sometimes I just do one a year space amount so um done quite a few shows so 2008 was my very first one and actually the very last one I did was 2018 I actually flew back home to do the very same show that I did for my very first one so it was kind of like it's all coming full circle it was like celebrating 10 years of competing for me yeah. And so um, I, I like to tell people, yep, I went back and 10 years later, I got second place. And nobody thinks to ask, well, how many competitors were there? There were two. <laughs> so I, I actually got last place, but it's second place and it's all good. I was really happy with what I brought to the stage. So um, yeah, everyone likes to win, but only one person can win. So I was still content with how things shook out so, so that's cool no i had no idea that like this wasn't automatically a um an obsession of yours that you wanted to do that you wanted to whatever all, all i did was i saw pictures and i didn't know your story i didn't know that that's uh that's how you got started mm -hmm. that's that's cool yeah yeah i know some some people's um like bodies are really really easy easily built for running like that they, they have little springs in their feet and their like calves or whatever and they're just like boing 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 this is super easy i'm good at running and other people are like i can't run to save my life like my lungs turn right, right. hamburger or whatever I, but i'm good to lift weights or whatever so like <laughs> to hear your story be like really? yeah you just enjoyed it that's that's kind of cool to hear that like you found yeah. what, what was good for you and your body that, that's great that's really cool yeah yeah, so tell me, um, you wanted to talk a little bit about trains too. And um, so tell me, what is it? Are you a train conductor? Are like, uh, uh, there's no steering wheel. So like, what what does that look like? What, what... Um, I'm actually an engineer now. Um, I started um, on the Alaska Railroad. Uh, I, I was born and raised in Alaska for those who don't know. Um, and then in high school, I worked as a tour guide for the Alaska Railroad in the summertime. And so working on the passenger trains, I would hear the conductors and the brakemen talking to the dispatcher on the radio. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool. I want to do that. And they're all, no, no, you don't. It's not these fancy passenger trains. It's, it's dirty. The schedule is really lousy. You don't want any of that. I'm like, but I think I do. And so I kept asking questions and I actually um, applied um, to be a brakeman in 2005. I didn't make the cut. And then I tried again in 2006 and got hired. So I started as a brakeman. Um, and then uh, in 2007, I um, got promoted to conductor and hostler, which is um, working the hostlers work in the roundhouse, moving uh, locomotives around the shop area and uh, taking care of inbound and outbound power. And then um, I moved to Iowa in uh, 2011, so 10 years ago already, it's crazy, mm -hmm. and uh, started working there as a conductor. And then in 2016, I got my engineer's license. So now I run trains. Um, it's, it's really interesting because, um, it's not a very common career just in general. Yeah. And then, um, on the Alaska railroad, there's actually a lot of women who are conductors and engineers. So I was just one of the girls. And then I moved down to Iowa and I'm like, uh, where's the rest? And they're like, the rest of what? I'm like the women. And they're like, Go look in the mirror because it's you. And so um, I am the only female um, train and engine man with my company in the entire state of Iowa. 
currently. So we've had some women um, come and go, but right now I'm the only one. So ladies, if you are looking for a, um, an interesting career field, um, consider railroad. There's no glass ceiling. It's a union job. So the pay scale is set. You don't have to um, bust through any glass ceilings. It's we're all the same. We're all in the level playing field and it's a really unique job. So it's kind of, it's kind of entertaining to watch people's faces when you tell them what you do. And, and they're like, I never would have guessed that. <laughs> it's right. kind of fun. Well, cool. Yeah. I was just mainly curious about that and how, <laughs> how your life got to be where you were. So that really fills in a lot of details. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you talked about your, your, your baby's dad. Um, so, so I remember there, there was a bit of a, uh, a breakup that happened and, and you're, you've moved on. So for anybody that's having relationship issues, you've been there and done that. Um, do you have any, any <laughs> advice? I mean, I never saw any details at all on Facebook. You don't share, you don't have to share the drama, but like how, <laughs> got any advice for people who are going through a rough time that's about half of relationships so like yeah um well unfortunately I have um been through it twice um my first husband um I I had a lot of self-esteem issues uh that I was working on um just from being bullied really badly in high school things like that and so uh, when he came along, I was like, well, I better make this work because nobody else is going to love me. No one else is going to want me. So if I'm going to get married and have a family, then here's my chance. And so I got married to the wrong person for the wrong reasons. And I was way too young. We got married a week after my 20th birthday. So I was really young. And so that was a life lesson at I have nothing against the guy. It's just, um, we had no business being married to each other. And so that was a hard life lesson to learn. And then, um, the pendulum swung the other way. And so I, um, I was, um, swept off my feet by a different kind of personality that is also not a healthy personality, um, for me to be with. And so, um, that was another life lesson. So I guess, um, my advice to people is pay attention to you, recognize your own value because each of us has value, um, in and of ourselves. We don't need somebody else to bring out that value or tell us that value, um, that value is intrinsically within us. And um, for those who believe in God, we were created by God and he should be the one determining that value, not anybody else on this planet. And so um, it's, it's been a lot of life lessons for me. I guess I don't learn these lessons easily. And so I had to, um, I had to repeat the course. And so, um, it's, it's not something I would recommend, but, um, it's, it's never okay to be in an unhealthy relationship. Um, even if they aren't, um, beating on you, there are still ways that, um, a person can be unhealthy for your mental and emotional health. And um, especially if there are kids involved, your kids need to see mom and dad um, as you. good people and being able to take care of the child and not always um, high stressed or push down or, um, negative, um, personality conflicts and fighting kids need a healthy environment. And so, um, people who stay together just for the kids, um, if, if you're being pushed into that sort of, um, situation, 
it's not necessarily what's best for the kids if it's an unhappy, miserable, toxic home environment. Mm. And so um, like my son's dad, he actually, he lives across the street in three houses down. And so wow. it, it was kind of awkward at first, but it actually makes visitation really easy because our son can just go back and forth as he wants. Yeah. We don't have, you know, a big, long drawn out custody battle. And so that is healthy when both parents can co-parent together and look out for what's best for uh, the child instead of trying to use the child against the other parent. And so mm -hmm. it comes down to what's healthy, what's safe, and what is in the child's best interest. Um, wow. Well, thank you. That's... Um... <laughs> I think a lot of people are sort of in those circumstances too, and mm -hmm. probably more so in those circumstances than I, <laughs> I want to be a train conductor, but Hey, that's, the, <laughs> that's the thing, the unique thing that I wanted to hear from you. So, so there you go. Um, do you have any other thing that you want to talk about or have questions or anything or nothing? Uh, no. Um, I, I think um, I've sent you some pictures, so you've yeah. got some pictures that you can use. So if people, are are interested um i've got some of those and um yeah if anyone does have um questions about um lifting exercise um competing things like that yeah. or um or getting started on the ra railroad um they can shoot me a message or whatever i'm on facebook sure. it's virginia gray um, I don't accept friend requests from people I don't actually know, right. but I, I do respond to messages. So right. if someone has a question, I'm always happy to talk fitness or trains. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Well, Virginia, that's it. Thank you so much for just having a good time and, and talking with me here today. That was great. Absolutely. Thank you. See ya. All right. Well, you yeah, have a good day. Bye everybody thank you for watching my video this is just a reminder that uh virginia gave us uh a way for us to reach out to her uh to get more information not to make inappropriate comments about any of the pictures that you may or may not have seen um here on my videos i would like us to be mature and uh and uh post respectfully so thank you for watching and for being mature in all things i love you and have a great day